Hey, how's it going? How's it going? There's already some people in chat. Hey, Craven, how's it going? The whole petabyte of gaming. That's a lot of gaming. <laughs> oh, yeah, according to the follow. Yeah, thank you so much. There are a couple follows in there while I was getting ready. Father, father, what am I even saying right now? Father, bad touch. Um, petabyte gamer, zero. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of gamer. You're right, Craven. Hey, Bacon Hawkinator. Thanks for the sub, man. Thanks for uh, renewing your sub, man. Three months. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it, man. How are you doing today? Man, uh, my headphones are super loud. And my lights are a little bit off, but oh well. I'm gonna roll with it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it so much, Bacon Hawk, man. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah. Petabyte Gamer. Man, that's, yeah, that is a lot of gamer. Takano, how's it going? Thassian, aloha. Aloha. Let's get the stream started. Yeah, man, dude, that's a good way to get it started. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it, man <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna roll with it lights are a little bit off, but yeah, totally gonna roll with it. I uh, There's a couple things that are off right now. I didn't uh, didn't fully set everything back up the way I normally do after uh, after working um, but anyways, it's uh It's it's, it's happening. This is happening. <laughs> I, uh, it's kind of light out too, but I thought, hey, I'll, I'll keep the blinds partially open. Keep it, uh, yeah, we're gonna roll with it. Um, Thassian, I saw your PBS videos, so I presume your Proxmox upgrade to 6.2 went well. Yeah, oh yeah, it went flawless. Um, well, I, I take that back. So I, I have two Proxmox servers. Um, one of them didn't go so well, the other one went well. And the other one didn't go so well, nothing to do with Proxmox, everything to do with what I did. Uh, I go, I went against what I say, um, I always do with Proxmox servers, which is usually install nothing else on them at all. And so I broke my own rule. I forgot. Uh, I actually have a service running on there that communicates with my Dell, uh, iDRAC or my Dell, you know, services that can communicate with the hardware. And so when I tried to update it and run a sudo or not a sudo, but, uh, an app get update, uh, on Debian, I tried to update that too. And it wasn't a big deal. All I had to do was like remove that repository so it didn't try to pull down some dependencies and then change it. And yeah, totally, totally went uh went without a hitch once I removed that. But I was I was kind of scared because it's like my main Proxmox server. So I was like, this goes wrong. Uh I'm gonna have to rebuild a ton of stuff. Uh, but no, it's been it's been good. Uh Proxmox servers, I I feel like in the the five, the major version five were um, you know, hit or miss. Uh, they always say not to, you know, don't use their, you know, their, their, uh, non-stable updates or the updates that, uh, you get for free. If you don't subscribe, they basically say don't use those in production. Um, and with five, I felt like it was, it was, uh, you never knew if your machine was going to come back up after you updated, but six, I, I think they're doing a lot more QA with six. I think they realized Hey, there's a whole open source community right now that's not subscribing to uh, Proxmox or paying, and we should probably keep them, keep them afloat. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit, but uh, maybe not. But hey, Gear Bear, dude, thanks, dude. Yeah, man, Purple Mega Man, that thing actually works. Yeah, no problem, dude. Yeah, dude, hope your PC's running. Sorry if I I led you down the wrong path. I didn't realize when I said, hey, you have two M.2. Uh, drive slots, I didn't realize that one of them might be filled. I just, I, I was just going by the diagram, like two total. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I, dude, no problem at all. You didn't even have to do that really, but man, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'm behind a little bit on uh, comments. Uh, the stratology, uh, yo, uh, just your, just, just wait, I assume it's solid. Just saw your video on how to set up OBS Studio. Dope video, man. Thanks. Very easy to follow. Thank you. That was <laughs> that was actually one of my first videos before I really knew what I was doing. Uh, not that I know what I'm doing now, but uh, I've learned a couple things since then. Um, hopefully it was the Mac, the one for MacBook, because that one's a little bit better than my Windows one. My Windows one was just like, hey, let's start a YouTube channel, and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, appreciate it so much. Um, Garrett, yeah, no problem, Garrett. Dude, hope your PC's running, man. Did you get all your drives running? Get all your caching set up right? And uh, your games are probably loading a ton better now? 
Skal, Skalfa, hey, how's it going? Uh, hi, you're good, just had to mess with the CPU. Settings a little, of course, man. Uh, I'll be honest, this stuff seems way over my head. Hey, no no problem at all, man. Uh, here to help if you need more help. Uh, I love that stuff. I love I love hardware, I love building stuff, I love software, I love writing code, I love all technology. But uh, yeah, if you need help some more, let me know if you wanna like, cause I know you do, I think you use Resolve, last I checked. I think you were going in between, between Adobe uh, and Resolve. And I think you were using Resolve. So if you need help like putting like your cache drives for Resolve onto one of those SSDs that's not being used, that could help too. But man, that Intel drive you have, the Optane drive, dude, that, those things are dope, man. Those things are kind of expensive <laughs> and they're, they really perform. So uh, man, you should try to get that back in there somehow if it's out, because man, that's uh, those are perfect for a cache drive, uh, like for 100% cache. Um, unidentified user looking spiffy Tim. Oh, thanks. This is kind of, yeah, I've had this shirt like kind of forever. I like, I like that it's wearing out everywhere. And this is like my ultimate favorite hat ever. Buddy of mine, uh, he, he designs hats or apparel. And so he designed this one. And so like every time, uh, every time, well, when we used to go to people's house, houses, uh, when we go over there, he would, uh, have this box in this closet and say, pick some hats. So I ended up with like, I actually have a backup hat of this because it's my absolute favorite. I have one that's perfect still. Still has like the cardboard in it to keep it straight. And I had a blue one like this too. And I was like, I don't need a tan and a blue. And so I, I donated to Goodwill or to um, Salvation Army. But should have should have held on the blue one. Hopefully there's someone out there though that's wearing the blue version of this hat who really likes it. Dark Paladin, hey, how's it going? Thank you, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, strategy, any good companies you recommend to invest in? Oh man, that's a, that's a tough question, I don't even know. Um, so, I mean, I'll just, I'll just throw this out there. I, I never pick one company. Um, so I, I, man, I'm talking about financial uh, <laughs> advice. Don't, don't take this advice any more than you would take my server advice. Uh, but I use Wealthfront, and Wealthfront does a really good job at auto investing, auto reinvesting, um, as well as um, reducing the amount of taxes you pay. So I don't know. I use Wealthfront, uh, but try not to pick individual stocks to buy because <laughs> I'm bad at it. I have before, and I, I have some that I'm holding on to for a long time ago. But yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um, yeah, it's kind of like an index fund, except for. A lot smarter. Uh, Father of Bad Touch. Hello, everyone. Just got on here watching recent home live videos. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I saw your uh, your follow come in when I was getting started. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Gare Bear, I do use Resolve. Definitely hit you up about that. Hey, I'd rather have the SSD um, than the Optane. From what I read, all it does is boot HD faster, perform similar to SSD. Yeah, so you can configure it one of two ways. It can be configured, I think, as a uh cash drive uh for your os uh which windows 10 boots blazingly fast anyways if you have an ssd um and then uh the other way can be configured is just for uh a normal ssd too but but yeah yeah but uh if you put it back in we'll figure out how to get a, a cash drive and resolve that'd be sweet <laughs> father bad touches if you are the best yeah <laughs> thanks i appreciate it they're uh I'm, I'm learning a ton. I'll put it that way. Learning a ton. Uh, it's all new to me. Uh, at least uh, YouTube stuff. So just trying to get, you know, 2%, what, 2% better every time? 1%, 2%? Uh, it's going to take a while, but yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I just saw the one went pretty well put together. I'm interested in home lab now. Good software developer. <laughs> As a software developer too. Hey, hey, yeah, so am I. Software developer here. Uh, definitely invested or um interested in home lab stuff um that's it's it's not how i get start uh, got started but it's how i got like re-energized into home lab stuff because i've i've had a another computer always running uh after i had one uh shortly after i had two um and then learned all about networking and all that stuff and then i was like hey maybe i can host my own website and domain and and stuff like that uh, so that's kind of where i got started uh, but then I didn't do software development for a while longer. Um, and that's where I've gotten re-energized again with all the new tools and stuff that are out there. Um, 
that you can use that can help you along the way, especially for web hosting and service hosting and stuff like that. So that totally re-energized me uh, in a different way. Uh, more to like, how do I how do I run this stuff, you know, that Google Cloud has or that Amazon, you know, has in my basement. <laughs> Or, you know, some of these game server services out there. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's fun stuff. Um, Gear Bear, have you looked into ETS for investing? I haven't. I haven't. I have not. You know, I just, you know, I, I have the typical investment stuff and then just do some wealth front stuff because it's uh, super easy and the return, I don't know, for the last couple of years has been like astronomical. Um, and so it's all, you know, it's just like... It's, it's my set it and forget it every, you know, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, I mean, bi-weekly. I never understood why they said bi, why they say bi-monthly or bi-weekly. And it means like every two, like I get it. It's every two, but it sounds like it should be twice per. But anyways, <laughs> I need, I need Thassine to throw some cool story bros in here because I'm <laughs> going off on a tangent. Uh, but yeah, I should, uh, I should look at it. Uh, Gare Bear, man, we got the, the investor in the house too. Got the investor in there it is Thassian. thank you I, I i definitely i'm gonna i need to get some new emotes and soon i'm just gonna have one that's like a, a real cool, cool story bro uh so that people can throw out there <laughs> to let me know that i'm i'm way off in the weeds talking about stuff uh <laughs> um tess uh it's t stein that's t stein i think sorry uh need to get some new glasses actually i I think I'm gonna get a couple pair. But anyways, uh, stumbled here from YouTube, home live video as well. Awesome, well welcome, thank you. This one's a little, so my Twitch stream is a little more off the cuff. Um, probably a lot more ums in there and uh, less editing. Uh, really informal um, and a very loose uh, agenda. Uh, for the most time, I, I try to stay in here and answer questions that people have or we talk about topics. Uh, but sometimes they're a little more organized and we walk through stuff. I, I have a, a topic for today. I, I know that some people were interested in uh, the new TrueNAS scale last time we were on stream on Saturday. So some people were interested in that. Um, I could totally spin it up in a virtual machine and we can walk through and see what TrueNAS scale is all about. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's it's open floor. It's everyone's everyone's turn to talk or chat. Uh, yeah, I, I agree that uh, TrueNAS scale is, I think it's going to be great too. I think it's a good move by IX Systems. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think I missed a comment real quick. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of a slump as well from a developer progression. So I was looking into Home Labs networking. Awesome. Well, my channel has all of that, plus some old gaming videos. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I have some coding videos uh, or programming videos. I, I typically say coding. I don't know why. Uh, it sounds cooler, but uh, makes you think of like all those 90s movies where, you know, just a flood of text and people just hacking away. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I have uh, some programming videos, um, some like stream tool videos, um, and then um, even some like Windows specific videos and then a lot of home live stuff because... I love it. And, and like, I have friends that ask me all the time, like, hey, what do you use for this? Or how do you do this? Or what do you use? And so instead of me just responding back with just like, you know, hey, you know, here's what I use for this, I usually end up just kind of making a, making a video about it because uh, it's fun. Um, but yeah, true NAS scale, going back to that, yeah, I think it's going to be great. It's, it's super interesting to think about. Like, um, you know, I, I mean, uh, I haven't been following true NAS for our free NAS for a long time, uh, you know, maybe a year. Um, and I've seen it gone go from, you know, free NAS to soon true NAS and then, you know, to, to true NAS core and true NAS scale. Uh, so it's interesting, you know, and the... the uh, so I virtualize my true NAS and uh, I know some other people who do. And um, the biggest, one of the biggest questions people ask me uh, about like virtualizing is how do I get the, you know, the QEMU guested guest tools installed and on FreeBSD and it's like, it's not easy or and or possible. I haven't found a way, probably is, but I didn't dig hard enough. Uh, but true NAS scale, now that they're going to Linux, 
and it's based on Debian. Now it's like, oh sweet, you just run Aptitude and install it. And we can we can walk through that here in a little bit. The the most interesting piece for me is that um, you know they're going to be adding LXC containers and have support for native Docker, um, which is awesome. I think it's totally the right way to go. I mean, it's what Proxmox did. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like they're doing what Proxmox is doing. You know, that's where I'm kind of like, hmm, this is going to be interesting because they're going to you know. They're going to uh, uh, a Debian Linux. They're going to support LXC containers. I mean, once you get on Debian, you, you, you support anything. But they're switching, you know, over for, for many reasons, but uh, mainly for KVM too. So they're, they're switching out uh, their virtualization stack. Um, they're getting on to a container stack with LXC, you know, and then they're going to support Docker. I'm just like, oh man, this is going to be, you know, true NAS. Trunas and uh, Proxmox soon, you know, they're going to be bumping heads, but uh, probably not bumping heads. I mean, they kind of, they're playing in different spaces, uh, kind of, but they're both trying to do a lot, which is awesome. You know, Proxmox, which, you know, does, can do ZFS, but doesn't do the rest of the NAS stuff. Doesn't do a lot of, you know, the rest of storage stuff. Super great. I mean, it can, they're all Linux, they can, but, you know, I think uh, Trunas has uh, got a great UI for doing a lot of that stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's that's my spiel on on TrueNAS. Like it uh, looks cool. Uh, TrueNAS scale it is. It's hard for me to remember that one. I don't know why. Uh, the way they explained it in the video I saw is that you know that they they want to scale wide now. So they've always been able to scale vertically and build these massive you know data stores on this one server. But now they want to they want to go wide and maybe cluster and build out which uh, sounds, sounds super interesting to me. Uh, T. Stein, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Kagiz, sorry if I didn't say that. Hello, welcome, thank you. You just came from a home lab tour, nice, thank you. Wow, a lot of people checking out that video lately. I, uh, I, I, I was so, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I was scared to make that video, to be honest, uh, not scared. Yeah, I was just like a little bit intimidated. Hey, Kagis, thank you. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Got my little Mario going. You should see him appear back there on my Raspberry Pi here in a little bit. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I was a little intimidated to share mine at first um, because, you know, um, I don't know. You, you go out to the you know subreddit and everyone has these awesome, you know, home labs. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like my whole network stack is like, screwed into a piece of plywood on the wall <laughs> you know it's like what i did when i moved here because i've never i'm as long as i mean back when i was in college yeah my cable modem sat on a shelf or something but even then i had the stackable thing so i, I thought it was cool and i bought my own um but then like when i moved in this house i didn't have a rack or anything so i'm like okay i'm gonna continue with this theme where i don't put my cable modem on a shelf or anything it's no other reason why, except for I like it in one place. And then I'm just going to mount everything to the wall. So, yeah. But anyways, yeah, it was, uh, I was, uh, yeah, it is an intimidating subreddit. I totally agree. Uh, and, but for the most part, and it's not because of the people, because the community there is totally, you know, they're great. Like, totally agree. Oh, Kaggers, I hope you're, that red means to change the color of my room. Because I, I hope that's what you're trying to do, because I'm going to do that soon. <laughs> totally. It's coming. Uh, I hope that was uh, soon. I just need to write the code for it. Uh, I, I'm sure I could pick up something else uh, to, to do it, but I have a bot that runs this channel. You can do exclamation point commands. And it's the same bot that's open source that's out on GitHub. Uh, but soon, I'm, I'm totally going to do it. Uh, anyways, uh, man, I need another cool story, bro. Where was I? Um, long story short, <laughs> um, the... The, that subreddit, the community is fantastic and great and very knowledgeable. So I wasn't intimidated by any of the people. It's more just how awesome uh, the content was that people were sharing there. So, yeah, it's, uh, I agree. It, it, it can be intimidating. And that's where I was like, you know what? Uh, here more, here's where I'm at now. Hopefully this inspires someone else to share their stuff. And, you know, in the future, I can say, you know, look at this. Here's where I was. Here's where I am. Yeah, that's the end. Cool story, Bob. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so yeah, uh, so red, 
what else to do? Uh, so, yeah, about the red, I, I hope you're trying to change the, the, the colors in my room because soon that will work. I just haven't had the time to put into it yet. And I want to do something too with, with points, channel points or something like that. Um, and then I need to set it up nice so there's a timer, you know, uh, I don't know. I haven't figured it totally out yet, but I'm glad you did that because that's a reminder to me uh, to do my light color sooner. Uh, Takano, uh, commands. Oh yeah, Craven, thanks. Thank you for doing commands. Um, sorry, I have like a mint in my mouth and sometimes it gets like stuck in my cheek because my mouth gets so dry. But I have to have something uh, from all this talking. <clears throat> okay, uh, Takano, I finally finished up my cable management for the rack and desk setup. Got all the patch panels done as well. Just need to replace some cables. Yeah, I saw that in Discord, man. I've been enjoying watching your, your journey. <laughs> you know, going all the way back from, uh, you know, just a plain old white rack to to getting your uh, Microtech switch to then, you know, <laughs> having to totally customize the whole entire thing uh, and, uh, you know, get it going. But but that's awesome that you, you've gotten a lot of your cable management done and that uh, hopefully it's getting uh, closer to, well, it'll never be done, but getting closer to being where you want it. So that's awesome. I wonder why my uh, commands took so long to respond back. I wonder if that was just like Takano was super fast and got in between there. Because usually my bot should respond super fast. I mean, milliseconds. So Takano must have been quick on the draw. Either that or the Twitch API is running slow. We can blame Twitch API. <laughs> Even though it's pretty solid. Like I, I run so many things against the Twitch API all day long and like rarely ever has issues. There are some. Funny thing is I reported some issues too. And they're like, okay, we'll roll something back. We broke something. I was like, oh man, I was just, I was just letting you know I was seeing something odd. Uh, not that they know who I am, but I think, yeah, I think when they saw like my API usage, they're like, okay, yeah, this is definitely affecting this person. Um, Kages, I want to say that right. Hopefully it's Kages. Uh, uh, do you know my playhouse? I do not know your your playhouse. What is my playhouse? I do not. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so like, I don't know. I thought, um, yeah, I thought if you guys were interested, we could, uh, oh, it's a wide uh, YouTube channel. I know, I know. Oh, I do know it. I think this was the one I was trying to find a couple of weeks ago, at least the name for him. Is this the guy who has like, uh, yeah. Is this the guy who has like, he has like three Dell R710s like on full blast and like two disc arrays like on a uh, on a table. And uh, yeah, I know who he is. And I think his intro is like, it says my playhouse and it has like lights flashing or something. Uh, and he basically just, yeah, the Lenovo farm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I know exactly who he is because I was trying to think of that name a couple weeks ago. And yeah, and I kept saying, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Thassian. Uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, it's Unky Joe's Playhouse, and I was like, "Oh, it's no, it's my Playhouse." But yeah, I've uh, I've seen that guy. I really appreciate his stuff because um, it's just raw. It's just raw, just him in his house and server racks going, uh, and I love it. Uh, and it's just he, he seems so genuine in there too. Uh, but I have seen it, and that um, definitely inspired a, a a lot of my decisions uh, around getting a rack, a rack mounted server with my Dell R seven ten. And disc arrays too. There were, there were like four or five videos that influenced me to get a disc array, uh, my net app before I finally did. But yeah, I have seen his channel. I, I definitely enjoy it. I am subscribed to it. I don't think I've seen any content for a while. I think a lot of his content was older. I'd love to see more and see what he's up to for sure. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I And I saw one where it was just like, just him. Oh, I had to, I think I had to look at his video up really close because i i think he had a net app his last cell was 12 hours ago i need to jump on it then um but i think he has a net app disc shelf and i think he was running the sfp cables um um from his net app to his uh hba controller i think uh, i can't remember but i think that one was where i was like i thought he had two net apps i don't have to look again but uh I do remember looking at his videos quite a bit, but yeah, yeah. 
Um, and I, I don't know, for some reason I was trying to f like look really close on how he had them connected. Because I saw he was using two cables and I didn't know if there was a way, if he did two cables, if he could, you know, use 12, you know, tw uh, split up the array basically in there. And that's what I was kind of hoping I could do, you know, throw 12 disks at one of my virtual machines and 12 at another. Because uh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to basically run you know, two free NAS instances and just sync them. So then I had two copies of my data, but then I would, like couldn't figure out <laughs> an easy way or a, a logical way to do that that did that, you know, made any kind of sense to try to undo if something went wrong. Uh, but I think people use multiple ones of those cables so you can have like uh, dual pathing or multiplexing. Uh, not that I need that, but yeah, I'll have to check it out again. Yeah. It's been a while, but I, I have looked at him quite a bit. Yeah, I, I do remember one too, where it was like, I think he had, I don't know, three, four servers just all on a desk. And it, no, it, it might have been, I thought it might have been the NetApp one. And I think he was like doing a, a burn in or a test uh, on his drives. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it's got to be so hot and so, you know, loud in there. Yeah, I totally agree. His content's very raw. It just goes with the flow. Totally agree. And, and I love it too, because it's just like, it's a day in his life. You know, he's like, I'm going to turn the camera on and do what I normally do, you know, but I'm going to talk to the camera. So I, I appreciate that. I have a hard time doing that sometimes. Uh, I get, I get, uh, I get too caught up. My brain is uh, uh, a lot further ahead of where my mouth usually is. So, and then it trips me up. It's like uh, when you have audio video sync issues, so that's my brain. <laughs> uh, and then it finally skips and catches up, but then sometimes goes too far. Uh, okay, so uh, hey, Curry Coon. Okay, a new name looks like. Just found your YouTube video. Just found your YouTube. See, that's exactly what it's talking about. Brain's ahead of my mouth. Uh, just found your YouTube today, Tim. Uh, watched your 20 ways to use a VM video and virtualized versus containers vids. Great content, man. It's just stuff for me. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, I know, I, I know a lot of people, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I know what I'm trying to say, but, uh, you know, I know, I know a lot of folks who virtualize stuff. I know people who containerize stuff and then they can containerize it multiple ways. You know, maybe it's LXC, uh, maybe it's with Docker, um, which is all great. And, you know, I, I noticed a friend of mine who would virtualize everything and, you know, I was like, hey, you can just containerize it and then, you know, you get a lot of the same benefits, a little more complexity, uh, but, you know, get the same service, uh, but do it with less. And so, you know, when I for, created the first one, I'm, you know, just ideas for virtualization, the, the, those are really the things that like my, my friends would ask me. I say friends. It's like two people that ever ask me, <laughs> you know, but two people in tech who I worked with would ask me questions like, Hey, have you heard of this? Or, Hey, do you use this? Or what do you use for X? And so those, those, you know, uh, 20 ways to virtual, to use a virtual machine videos were kind of to answer that question for a lot of, a lot, a lot. all two people who, who asked me, <laughs> but, um, Kano, uh, really want to get up my MC server network, but the whole network issues, 16 gigs of RAM itself, and the machine I'm using is just sitting at 14, 16 gigs used. When you say MC, do you mean Minecraft, I'm assuming? Really want to get up my Minecraft server network? I think you mean Minecraft, maybe. Uh, watch you later, Tim. Stay safe. Hey, any, any Gakko? Anin, Anin Gakko? Hey, thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Um, so what are you trying to do, Takano? Uh, your Minecraft server network, but the whole network uses 16 gigs of RAM itself. And the machine I'm using is 14 and 16. Oh my gosh. It was the whole network you hosted for a while. Oh my gosh. So were these, were like, like I, I've only hosted, you know, just a Minecraft, you know, server itself. Um, I, I never had a need for more than one instance. Is this, is this like, were they different worlds, different environments or like, how would you use more than one? Were they just totally different servers for different people? 
It's like five servers total, all linked with a hub, and player data was synced across the server using database. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, I have my, uh, I think I write out my world data to, you know, whatever, a path on the disk um, so that it persists between reboots, but never, I don't think I've done anything cross world or if I tore it down. Yeah, cross world. No, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Man, that's a, that's a ton of RAM. Yeah. I totally wish that the, um, I, I wish Microsoft would unlock, you know, worlds, um, or platforms or, or consoles to be able to play with the Java version of the server. It's kind of a bummer for me that they do that, that you have to have the Java version. I don't know. I, I feel like more people would play on a lot of these servers, but then again, there's, there's, there's plenty of awesome Minecraft servers out there, but I feel like at least on my Minecraft server, like more people would play if they could play from console. Yeah. Each server was a specific game mode, uh, but what I was trying to do before I stopped running it, it, it was that players would gain gems every hour or so and unlock gadgets uh, to unlock gadgets in the lobby. That's awesome. That's uh, that's sweet. Kind of sounds like uh, so there was this like reverse engineer World of Warcraft server that's out there, and I think that's what uh, I mean. That's what spawned the whole WoW Classic was because you had so many people playing on <laughs> uh, you know the reverse engineered Minecraft server or Minecraft World of Warcraft server. Anyways, long story short, uh, I did a little bit of programming there on the WoW server I was running, uh, for educational purposes, of course, um, that would grant people, uh, it would give them gold per hour. So very similar to that, which is pretty cool. And I wrote mine all to a database too. Uh, but it would give them gold per hour. So if they played on the server, they got gold per hour. And it was awesome because like the whole entire auction house was just ran by bots. And like, I listed everything in there, like mounts, you name it. But, uh, it made it basically so you could play WoW single player if you wanted to. It was awesome. Pretty awesome. You could even use the dungeon finder too. You can hire bots to run dungeons with you. It's pretty sweet. Uh, but yeah, that sounds uh, pretty similar. I've, I've done some similar stuff, but not for Minecraft. It was for uh, the reverse engineered WoW server. I forgot the name of the project now. Uh, and the network I'm running had support for Bedrock Edition as well as Java. That's awesome. Yeah, that's sweet. So why why did you take it down? Did you just run out of space? While you're doing that, I need to check this real quick. Uh, lack of resources and a reuse the server for PF sensor. Yeah. <laughs> well, Proxmox, yeah. <laughs> Priorities, you know. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. And if it's if it's virtualized, oh, you just don't have the 16 gigs gigs of RAM to spare, I guess, anymore. Then that's probably probably the the reason. Because if you're virtualizing it, yeah, you could just totally totally spin them up. But that's a lot of RAM. But I guess it's not that much. If you're running 20 instances of Minecraft, you know, that's less than. A gig of RAM each. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I haven't done enough with Minecraft to like. I haven't gone that far uh, with Minecraft. I just set up my server, uh, turn on some flags. I have the bedrock. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I I totally have the bedrock running as well and. I, I check on my server every now and then and people have built like the most crazy things ever. I would love to go on it one day on stream and just like check in on my Minecraft server because I have no idea who's playing it. There's like, I have no idea how they're finding it. No idea how they're playing it. Um, but I feel like if I went there first, I would have to clean up some of the language that's in there because <laughs> it's pretty, 
it's kind of vulgar, uh, but it's people basically saying, don't touch my stuff, but you know, in, in uh, different, different ways that you could say, don't touch my stuff. Uh, but it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Uh, but I have no idea. Uh, no idea. Uh, Petabyte Gamer. Hey, uh, Techno Tim, you know what's fun? Accidentally turning off your server that hosts your firewall when you meant to shut something else off. I know that well. <laughs> I know it. Well, I know, I know, I know what you're talking about in general because, you know, my, my firewall is virtualized too. So every time I need to reboot my server, I'm like, oh, internet's got to go down, which it's rare, but it happens, especially when I update Proxmox now. Yeah, it kind of stinks. And then like our power went out for like uh, probably about an hour. Um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, because when I was editing one of those videos, um, power went out and I'm like, sweet, you know, got UPS, got this covered. And then, you know, my UPS only lasts about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and that's a long time you know, for everything I have running. And I'm like, okay, around four minutes, three minutes, I'm like, okay, I got to shut everything down. And sure enough, I had to shut everything down, including my virtual firewall, which means I had zero internet. And I'm like, I had to bust out my net gear, my old, or my old Linksys router and hook it up. Uh, but I'm slowly trying to figure out like how to get some kind of high availability and basically know when, you know, my virtual appliance is off to then pop on a switch to my other one. And so I can still have internet, but yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, to kind of now the issues with the server can't take anymore is it only can take two DDR3 slots. That stinks. Yeah, that stinks. Uh, what have, sorry, Takano, what done that more than have wanted? Sorry, just like here, hearing some feedback and I thought my dogs were in here. <laughs> I thought they were running around. Uh, yeah, and now the issue is that the server can't take any more RAM. Yep, yep, I have done that more than I have wanted. Yeah, I, yeah, we're in the same boat. Rip BPG. <laughs> I've done that to my QNAP many times. Yeah, it, it stinks when it, I mean, it's great when you're consolidating stuff, but when your router's in there too, it kind of is like, oh man. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, storage, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I, I have to, I have a certain order in which I need to shut things down. <laughs> Because, you know, FreeNAS is virtualized, internet's virtualized, a couple database servers, and then a um, couple instances of Rancher, along with some virtual Windows virtual machines. Um, and then one iSCSI share that's mounted or connected to one of my Windows virtual machines that then shares out a ton of stuff. So I have like this, you know, this act, this balancing act every time I, or orchestration every time I need to shut stuff down. Because uh, things shut down in the wrong order, it'll be fine. But some things hang, and they shouldn't hang. So yeah, I I totally it's uh it's uh, it's crazy, uh, crazy not so crazy, but uh, it's okay. XOR, what's up? How's it going, everyone? Hey, welcome, man. How you doing? Hope everything's going good. Yeah, good here. Just um, man, just just hanging out, getting ready to um. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna spin up uh, TrueNAS Core really quick, kind of show it off. I mean, it's, I mean, uh, it's gonna be hard to know the differences because it looks exactly, or not TrueNAS Core, sorry, TrueNAS Scale. Uh, it's gonna be hard to like really understand what the differences are because, well, I don't want to spoil it, but you'll see when when we get it loaded. You know, some things aren't done yet, some things are, but. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're gonna check it out. I don't know. I got this little countdown timer. I thought that was a good uh, good way to, to to start it off. I mean, we're just gonna spin it up super quick, see what it's all about. I'll show it off. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. How's your uh, how's your Proxmox journey going, XOR? Proxmox and Docker. Uh, sweet, well, I've never done TrueNAS or FreeNAS, uh, so it'd be cool to look at it. Awesome. Yeah, and so this is this is the the next product that's coming out from iX Systems, which is you know TrueNAS Scale, which runs on Linux instead of FreeBSD, and promises to have a ton of support for all the Linux like stuff. So, um, but yeah, we'll we'll see that here in a few. 
Kano, if I ever get the Minecraft server, I'll definitely show it in Discord, but the ETA is unknown as RAM limitations. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'd love to see it sometimes. I'd love to, like, see or, yeah, see your, or know your thought process behind it. Like, yeah, or like, are you using a service to kind of string them all together? Like, are the commands that people use, or the store, the lobby where they buy stuff? Like, how is that connected? Is there, do you run some other service that runs all of that and that's just connected to a database? Just trying to figure out how that piece works. Uh, good man, Proxmox is rocking. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're liking it. I'm, I'm liking it too. Uh, so everything is behind a pros proxy, basically. Okay, but then what's the service that's running? Is it like, did you, is it some other, uh, so you connect to that and it will connect you to the lobby server that lets you run the server commands. Oh, I see. Okay. And then that's something totally separate from Minecraft. It's, it's just where you can run like RPC or, or an RBAC commands or something. Oh, I didn't know that was going to make noise. Uh, do, do I have my own container registry? I don't know if that's for me, but um, no, personally, I don't. <laughs> wow, that's, that's pretty legit. That is a legit countdown. I didn't realize it was going to make all those noises. I, I did enjoy the gong at the end. Um, do I have my own container registry? Um, well, that's a tough one. So the open source stuff I do, I store those Docker containers in Docker Hub. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then the closed store stuff I do, I store those Docker containers in GitLab. Because uh, a lot of my private stuff's in GitLab, a lot of my public stuff's in GitHub. That's how I've kind of like separated in my head, but they're kind of both places now. So, so yeah, so yeah, if you're trying to understand like, yeah, how my, yeah, infrastructure stuff works. And so like my, yeah, my, my, yeah, that's the best way to put it. My private stuff is in uh, GitLab and then that has SSH keys and can actually uh, clone or, or pull those Docker images. Oh yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was picking up what you're laying down. That's what you're going after. Um, yeah, so do I have the Docker file in GitHub or do you use the reg I use the, yeah, so, I use, I, I should just show you um, so at some point in time how I organize my code. Um, so I usually have a Docker file with my code and then as part of my CI process, usually step one is test the code. Uh, step two is uh, build the Docker image. And then step three is uh, push the Docker image up to GitLab to a private registry. And then step four is deploy the code, which is to tell Rancher or Kubernetes to, hey, you know, apply this service and pull that registry, pull that Docker image out of the registry. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's exactly what I do. Uh, so I do use the registry feature of GitLab. Yep. It's totally my private registry. So I'll, I'll do like a, whatever Docker build and then a Docker push, and then it goes to the registry in GitLab. And then on the deploy, the fourth step of the deploy, um, Rancher 1, I basically tell it to go, I basically tell my Rancher API to pull that image down, uh, but in Rancher 2, use Kubernetes to deploy the service. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to like weave a lot of my stuff together <laughs> with my content, and that's coming. Um, I just, I need a couple more stepping stones because it's like, I have this kind of this, you know, this home labs area. Then I kind of have this self-hosting area and then I kind of have this code area. And so like my home lab and self-hosting is kind of getting up here, but my code area, <laughs> this is a terrible, terrible uh, visual. Um, but at some point, all of my content will kind of connect together, but I'm seeing um, there's some gaps right now in the code piece um, that I think you're seeing. Uh, but once I get those there, then I could say, okay, here's a code project. You can build and build a Docker container and, you know, should work in GitLab or GitHub using 
either GitLab CI or GitHub CI. And then here's how you deploy it uh, to Kubernetes, which could be hosted at home. So I'm, I'm close, I'm close, I'm getting there. Uh, Cause then I'll have like a, just a big circle of <laughs> content where I can say, okay, you know, here's, if you wanna self host your own custom code, here's how you do it. You know, right now I have, hey, if you wanna self host some third party service at home, here's how you do it. Um, I do, I, I'm still missing a piece. I'll, I'll call out all of my, my, uh, my misses. I'm still missing a huge piece on getting uh, your own public certificate um, and getting a reverse proxy so that you can host your own stuff at home securely. And that's coming soon. That's coming soon. Uh, sorry, went off on a went off on a tangent there. Yeah, thanks, Thassian. Um, so software is called uh, Waterfall, then the server's behind it. Okay. Server's behind the air running paper spigot. I've seen spigot come up a couple times and I actually checked out spigot. So I'm um, semi-familiar with what it did. Uh, there's also a geyser MC proxy, but that's for bedrock clients. Okay. Uh, talked about that one. I'll post a diagram later on. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see the diagram. I don't know enough about um, Minecraft hosting other than, you know, the one instance I run and open some ports. Um, uh, Craven, oh, saw that. Uh, Father Bad Touch. Oh man, that sounds awesome. I was trying to find some stuff about that. Okay, so you're, cause you're coming from the developer angle too. Cool, awesome. Yeah, I have, uh, I'll have more DevOps stuff. And so it'll be basically like, self-hosted DevOps, you know, coming soon. <laughs> um, because that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing for years. Self-hosting, self-taught DevOps at home. Um, reverse proxy actually in, uh, intimidates me a bit after looking looking forward to the video. They can be intimidating or they can be super simple like Nginx. You know, plain old Nginx is a fantastic reverse proxy. Um, and I use it uh, a little bit, you know, by, well, it's used everywhere. You just don't know it, but yeah, it can be intimidating, especially, and certificates in SSL can be intimidating too. Uh, but I found a pretty decent pattern with let's encrypt um, and getting that self-hosted at home. So I need to, I need to just, uh, yeah, need to, need to get my content in order. Uh, a few more videos and I think I'll bridge a lot of these gaps. Let's encrypt in Nginx. Yeah, I, I agree. It's one that, um, I know uh, I need to do, and I need to do it right. I just want to wait until I can do it right. Uh, you could probably hear a bunch of kids. Uh, they opened our street up, and uh, tons of kids playing outside. Uh, so you could probably hear them because I had the window open. Um, sweet, looking forward to securing a home lab. Yeah, I mean, uh, at least I'll get you SSL. <laughs> Whether the whole the rest of it's secure is going to kind of be up to you, but for sure. Uh, Sorius, uh, you might want to do a video about putting the reverse proxy on a service, uh, like DigitalOcean, so you don't have to, uh, open standard ports on your network, for sure. Yeah, it's a, that's totally, uh, a legit concern, is that, you know, if you host it somewhere else, like DigitalOcean, Azure, Google, you don't have to worry about, you know, opening up port 443 on your router and letting that in, because it's letting in floodgates, but, you know, I totally agree, that's one of the risks, for sure. Uh, uh, sweet. I would love to get into DevOps and something like that, but I'm missing <laughs> something. I feel like I'm missing a developer these days. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. Fortunately, when I worked on, uh, one of the teams I worked on, um, in my past developer life, um, you know, we, our team was a product team. So I won't go too far into like enterprise stuff, but you know, we operate as a product team. And so, um, we treated our software product like, you know, like, like a real product. And so, you know, we had someone on the team who was, you know, developers, uh, designers, uh, UX, um, DevOps, um, so on and so forth, product owners, product managers. And it was cool because like everyone kind of had a shared ownership of that stuff. And so that's where I learned a ton of it too. And, you know, just that mentality, I think. Um, Use Nginx reverse proxy for Greylog and Grafana. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I set up a VN VM which runs Let's Encrypt and renewals all my certificates with DNS challenge for Cloudflare and then it deploys the search to my VMs running and services requiring a cell. Awesome. T Stein. Yeah, that's awesome. I uh, I do something similar. I run CertBot, but the CertBot adds them to my load balancer. Uh, because I don't I don't have a I don't have a wildcard technically. I have a multi 
whatever it is, multi-domains cert, uh, but adds it to my load balancer, which is cool. Uh, yeah, which is basically like a reverse proxy. Uh, R RP, wow, people are loving this uh, certificate talk and uh, yeah. Um, R RP Keenan 12, I use Cloudflare for, and I use Cloudflare Flare from my SSL and any port forwarded sites, etc. Yeah, that's awesome. Kirkoon, uh, I was originally looking at traffic. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm uh, starting to become a fan of traffic. Uh, yeah, traffic seems awesome because it helps discover like a lot of your microservices. That's what they promise. I have yet to see that work. I understand how they do it. And I've already looked into this. Like I kind of get what they're doing. I just need to, I need to reorganize some of my, my network so that uh, my services are auto discoverable by traffic. Because right now I go through a load balancer. So traffic just sees one big load balancer. Now I don't want to see one big load balancer. I want to see all my microservices, but yeah. Uh, the reason why Nginx is prolific uh, for reverse proxying is the performance and easy setup of caching. Totally agree, T Stein. They tried to solve the, uh, I think the reason why it exists is because they tried to solve the, what was it, 10K issue or something? I don't know. That's their, that's their reasoning of why they exist. And I think it was like, you know, what what would web servers in general do if you had 10,000, you know, connections all at once? And I think that's why Nginx got started was to solve that problem, if I recall correctly. It's been a while since I've looked at any of that, but that's what I remember hearing about solving the solving the 10K problem, I think it was called. I don't remember, but yeah, totally. And it, I mean, yeah. Uh, that's great. Right now, we're working to start up with four other developers, and I happen to be on the, to be the lead right now. Haha. -ha, so, gotta find my own way. Uh, gotta find my own way to find that stuff out. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree, especially at a startup. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome, though. So, the, um, yeah. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know what 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 I do at home is you know a little bit different than what I do at work. Like, uh, you know work we host our stuff and uh gcp and google cloud platform and we use you know all the google cloud stuff you know so a little bit different at home but uh, same same idea and hopefully when i get my code pipeline stuff going um in videos i mean the ci and cd i use at home is exactly like work mainly because i brought a lot of that there though too but yeah uh, Clay Crusher, hey, 93, got my rancher server up and running. Thanks for your videos and streams. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you for, thank you for hopping in and telling me thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you being here. It's, um, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I like to talk about it. So it's fun. Put it that way. Um, we're going to hop into this. I'm actually going to put it right here. Um, we are going to hop into getting... Trinana scale up and going. I just need 30 seconds. One, I'm going to open these windows. And two, I need to grab a little bit more water. I'll be back. It literally be 30 seconds. Um, don't go away. Be right back.
Okay, I am back. Apologize for that. It was probably a little bit longer than uh, 30 seconds. So, uh, and I do apologize if you hear kids screaming. <laughs> There's uh, tons of kids outside, which is awesome. Uh, and they're using my neighbor's driveway. It's kind of a ramp, which is sweet. I totally would too if I were them. Uh, but I had to open my window. It's getting a little warm in here. So if you hear your kids screaming, don't be alarmed. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, what were we going to do? So we talked a little bit about uh, TrueNAS Scale. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's this next project's project that iX System has going on. Um, if you're not familiar, they run FreeNAS, which will soon be TrueNAS Core. And TrueNAS Core falls into the TrueNAS family, which is you know both the open source community edition which is what we all run and then there's the enterprise edition which is what businesses run and so um they're committed to open source and they're an awesome company and they build awesome tools and awesome services like TrueNAS, uh, so that we can take advantage of them uh, meanwhile enterprises can fund them <laughs> which is awesome um but anyways they announced that there was going to be another addition to their family, which is TrueNAS Scale. And this kind of threw a lot of people off um, because they were like, hey, what's this new Linux thing? I thought you used FreeBSD, BSD. And so they kind of talked about it a little bit in a few YouTube videos. And their VP of engineering talked about it just a tiny bit. It was just basically saying like, you know, they were making all of these commits um, to this repo and um, sooner or later, people were gonna find out and so some people saw some commits to the repo um, that gave them clues that they might be switching uh, to Linux. Uh, so he kind of got ahead of it and said, hey, we're not switching, we're building another product. It's called TrueNAS Scale and it's based on Linux. So it's gonna run on Debian. So I thought, um, I thought, hey, why not like just take a couple minutes and check it out? Um, I haven't seen a ton different, uh, but you'll see. If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen TrueNAS or TrueNAS Core, this will look really new to you. If you have seen TrueNAS or TrueNAS Core, uh, some of this will look new to you. Uh, but this is a uh, TrueNAS scale, and I'm just going to give it just some very basic, pretty basic, you know, um, specs. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? Like eight gigs of RAM. I think that's enough for it, right? So this is a Linux system. So we're doing this in Proxmox. I think a lot of you are familiar with Proxmox, but that's my choice for, you know, hypervisor these days. Uh, been with a lot of, tried a lot of hypervisors, uh, settled on Proxmox because it's it's actually pretty great. Um. Anyways, so anyways, this is gonna spin up on my, my main node, VMID, this is pretty typical stuff. This is the ID of the virtual machine within here. I'm just gonna call it TrueNAS scale and it really, can I put spaces in here? I can't. TrueNAS, it's scale, all caps, because it's an acronym for something else. But we'll hyphenate it. Can I do hyphens here? Sure can. It does use ZFS, so it'll eat the RAM you throw at it. Yep, but eight gigs is good for demo. Totally agree. Yeah, ZFS loves RAM. It like eats RAM for breakfast, if that's the thing. Which is, you know, I struggled with that in the beginning because I'm like, ah, do I need to give this thing eight or 16 gigs of RAM just for, you know, building out a two, three terabyte raid. But anyways, that's a that's a different story for a different day. Um, so system, that's totally fine. SCSI controller, sure. Hard disk, 32 gigs, that's good. Uh, format, sure. SCSI, I mean, we could change this to vert IO block, but it really doesn't matter. Cores, um, really only needs one, but I'm gonna give it 24, why not? Uh, don't need anything in an advanced, but, um, Oh man, I think uh, I think XOR did this for me last time too. Is it 8196? Uh, 1024 uh, times 8? 8192. And technically that's probably a little bit less because it's the mibibytes instead of megabytes. That's okay. All right, next. Finish. And before we do that, uh, I'm going to do something. Um, one, so I don't have to... Ah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it now. So what I'm going to do really quick is just turn on the um, kind of foreshadowing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually turn on the QEMU guest agent and actually enable it uh, and say OK. Um, and that's something you traditionally haven't been able to do with um, current FreeNAS. 
uh, is because it's based on, you know, FreeBSD, and FreeBSD doesn't have the QEMU guest agent, uh, I don't think, or an easy way to install it. And I don't know if that's because of KVM or why, but either way, you haven't been able to do that ever in FreeNAS. So I'm gonna turn it on now and we'll actually install the agent here in a little bit. Um, and if you've never seen any of my videos, this is like, this is like my real home live environment. This isn't like a test environment. Like these are all of the virtual machines that I run that I show in all my videos. Like this right here, shield, this is the one running my, my, uh, my virtual firewall right now. So and I actually might need to shut my window a little bit because kids are, kids are going wild out there. Okay. Let's do an install. This should go fast. We're going to pick this disk. Yep. Password. You can't see that, but it's nothing anyways. Ooh, via BIOS. So we're just installing it real quick. This is typical stuff. You would do the same thing with, with free NAS or any Linux installation it's been going, going way back to any installation. Um, I do need to shut that. I'm sorry. Uh, give me seriously. This one will take, uh, 15 seconds. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, love kids and love that they're playing outside, but <laughs> they're right next to the window. So I thought I could get some fresh air in here, but I'll just have to wait a second. Uh, so why so many VMs? Oh man. Um, oh, if um, yeah, uh, because I do a lot of stuff. I don't know. Um, um, yeah, I have a walkthrough of what all of my VMs do, uh, but for the most part, they're running either windows because i have to um they're running ubuntu because i want uh, a big docker host with kubernetes running running my virtual firewall um running a database server i, I keep saying in all my videos i'm going to get rid of that but one day i promise i am and then a uh, lot's for testing too so yeah um I spin up VMs all the time. Like I spun up this one. Like my Rancher 2 from last time is still running. Uh, FreeNAS I ran for uh, test is running. Um, so yeah, uh, I'd say half of these are for testing and half of these are for real. I just, for some reason I don't delete my test ones unless I absolutely know that I don't need them anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, lots of, lots of good stuff. Um... Father bad touch. Don't think we hear him. Okay, I w I could hear them in my headphones, and it was like b b just screaming. So I was like, oh, that's probably not good for a stream. But I appreciate it. Uh, but I should, uh, like I said, if it's just me here by myself, I'd, I'd I'd love it. I'd probably scream out the window too, because uh, they're like riding bikes and skateboarding and ramping, and it's awesome. But I just didn't wanna didn't wanna. <laughs> I can still hear them. I didn't want uh, anyone else to to think oh, who's screaming in his house <laughs> um never enough vms t stein yeah i totally agree i totally agree never enough vms um and it's just uh yeah it's you know anytime i need something for testing sometimes even for videos i'll do it just because it's a clean slate um but like i mentioned the ones that i do run you know i could run through these while this is booting up um if i go into summary they'll even say so this is my rancher 2 instance um, this is my Windows virtual machine that's actually running my home security, so my Blue Iris. Um, it's also do, doing some iSCSI stuff too, um, but the, it's a connector to my FreeNAS. Um, Andromeda, this one right here is running FreeNAS. Um, Orion, this one's running my internal rancher cluster. Um, Hercules, this one's running my external rancher cluster. Uh, Kuiper is the one I was talking about. It's my database server that I'm going to get rid of. Oh, look at the CPU spikes. So I must have a must have a really big query here that runs for a while. Oh, but these aren't these aren't big spikes, anyways. But actually, it does. 
it pulls back a ton of data for a little while. I gotta look in that. I'm probably pulling back way too much data on one of my queries that I probably should change. Because uh, that, that's, uh, that's a big spike. So glad we looked at that. Uh, and then Shield. This is uh, my network firewall. And then TrueNAS, TrueNAS True scale, branch or two. Uh, what are my specs of my server? Oh, okay, so this server right here, uh, so this is my Dell R710. Um, so this is one that's kind of kind of maxed out, I guess. Uh, it's, I think, close to the highest specs you can get for this this model. Uh, but it it's two six-core, so dual-core Xeons. Sorry, two Xeons. Uh, each of them have six-core plus hyper-threading, and it's the 5670s. And, uh, and yeah, it's 144 gigs of RAM. Um, and then I did some, you know, swapping on, uh, the drives. So there, I had two terabyte drives in there, swapped them out, put in all SSDs. So now I have an array of, array of SSDs just for all my virtual machines. Um, and then I have a NetApp disk shelf attached to it too. And so this is basically my big virtualization engine. Um, and then you know, everything else is uh, containers. Um, so, uh, so you, you've tried a few firewalls. How about Entangle? Yeah, so I have tried Entangle. So I have, um, I have part of my network firewall journey um, documented uh, in my, in my, pro, uh, in my <clears throat> EF Sense video. Um, and so, yeah, I have done Untangle. I've done it two or three times. You know, and um, so I started, I could even go back with Windows routing and remote access, WRR or something. So I've done tons of like home firewall routers. And so I think I stayed on Untangle for a really long time, um, but then um, went to PFSense, tried Monowall. I've probably been back to PFSense multiple times, then OpenSense, then back to Untangle. And the thing I liked about Untangle was you know, you had this virtual rack where you were like, okay, here's my virtual network rack. This one does, you know, internet. This one does spam blocking. This one does antivirus. And that was a cool idea. You know, that's where I was like, okay, I, I like this idea better because it, it's all kind of centralized uh, without like hacking and installing stuff on the side. Uh, but then I found XG Firewall and I was like, oh yeah, so this is why I'm getting into this. Then I found XG Firewall and everything that XG Firewall does is, is pretty much integrated or baked into their product. So if I want to do, you know, uh, deep packet inspection, or if I want to do, um, whatever ad blocking or make rules on DHCP DNS, it's all right there, all the reporting, all everything, uh, VPN as well. And you know, nothing against uh, PF sense. Like I like it. It's a great product, but you know, when I wanted to install something like Snort um, to do like, you know, analyzing uh, my packets, it was like, you kind of install this plugin on the side and that plugin is running and the reporting is on a different port. And, you know, now I'm just going to plain old Snort to like analyze my packets. And I just kind of felt like it was just a weird model. I'll put it that way. It was just kind of a weird model. Like I installed something that I thought would be, you know, a first class citizen on this router, but it's on a different port hosted somewhere else, uh, has its own reporting, has its own doing whatever it's doing. Um, and I got to go somewhere else to look at it. So <laughs> that's where I was kind of like, okay, well, um, is there something better out there? You know, and I've seen, you know, I mean, if you think of software firewalls, like on your own machine, a uh, different concept, but at, well, similar concept, but a little bit different, you know, they can do all of these things within its own service. And so that's where I was kind of like, I, I heard lots of people talking about XG firewall and I was like, Hey, maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I'll spin it up. And so I did, and I haven't left yet because it's uh, it's, it's solid and it's super solid. Uh, so long one. Yeah. Sorry. I apologize. Clay crusher, uh, TNSR. Wow. High perf. Uh, I have tried IP fire, Sophos and PFSense. PFSense seemed good to me. Granted, still learning. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, um, PFSense, totally awesome. Like I had nothing against it. I just, uh, 
I found something a little bit uh, more geared towards what I wanted to do. And they had this whole like web application firewall where you can do reverse proxies on the firewall if you want and point them to your web services and it can protect them in a different way too. And I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, let's hit enter here. So this keeps going. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to shut it down just so I can make sure that this disc pops out virtually pops out. But, uh, yeah, have tried IP fire. So, oh, I said that, uh, have to, when I have a smattering of have to, when I have a smattering of 40 gigabit and hundred gigabit switches hard to get greater than 10 gigabit performance out of PF sense. Wow. Yeah. I haven't, uh, man, that's, uh, that's some routing or that's some switching, I guess. Cause my backbone here is only uh, one gig and I start to feel it when I start to do file transfers and stuff. And granted, there's not a lot going on here, but I mean, there's a lot of little things going on here, but you know, just me transferring my videos down to my server, like everything else starts crawling. Cause it's like, Hey, you're using 900 megabit, you know, close to theoretical uh, max of gigabit just to transfer the file. And so it's kind of, I, uh, I see it on other machines sometimes. Anyways, um, hardware, CD-ROM, let's get this guy out. Uh, and then let's start it back up. IP fire. I don't know enough about IP fire. I should look into it more. It's good, not good. What's it all about? All right, it's booting. I'm going to put this in full screen now too. A little, probably a little less distracting. Um, IP fire. Uh, Curry Coon, quick story. Deployed Sophos XG uh, for a SD WAN at my old gig for a year ago. Uh, that was a really awful experience. I think I'm still salty. Yeah, I mean, I've heard, you know, that, you know I've read in the forums um, I, I've heard different things on, uh, XG firewall, especially from people who are paying, you know, for a license, uh, for me, I'm using the home version. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I get what I get, uh, but I have heard, you know, in general, uh, people complain and there's, uh, what's the previous version of the firewall? It's like UGS firewall or something like that. I don't know. And people complain yet still. And they're like, well, I'm not going to switch to XG Firewall until it supports, you know, Feature X, which is available in the other product for the last five years. And so for me personally, I, I don't use a ton of that. The one thing that I am, uh, I guess, salty about is why they don't have, you know, Let's Encrypt support, you know, right in their product. And I think it's probably because they sell certificates too. It's totally like a conflict of interest for them to add. I, I think they do. Don't quote me on that. But um yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I wish they had uh, Let's Encrypt built in. Because then if they did, I would use, I, would, I wouldn't have to do what I have to do today, which is send all my HTTPS traffic to my other, to my other reverse proxy and do it all there. Which, maybe, maybe that's probably a good design. Uh, but it'd be super nice if it's built into my firewall. Because then I can do the, I can have Let's Encrypt there, auto-renewing, getting wildcard certs for all my domains, and then doing uh, reverse proxy back to my microservices and that would be cool. I don't know, but maybe, maybe the way I'm doing it now is the better, more open source way. Cause you know, or, or the more, I don't know, enterprise way or whatever. Cause most people don't have access to their, to their network firewall. Uh, at least if you're a developer. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, I went from one to 10 to 40, then finally got 100 gig, 100 gig. That's so crazy. 100 gig. What? Uh, t Stein, if you don't mind, would you need that was used cause another Linux based firewall. I played with a little bit. GUI is impressive, uh, but functional. Okay. IP fire. I have to check it out. Now you're, you're, uh, my interest is peaked. Uh, IP fire was good for me for about a year. It most used. I most use it uh, due to the little box it had on Realtek Nix if sense uh, through a fit with it. Okay. GUI's not impressive, I meant. Okay. That's not good for me then, because I'm a I'm a sucker for good GUIs. <laughs> not that I not that I always need one. Um, but when it comes to a tool that I'm gonna be using, um, 
in general. I, you know, I kind of, it's kind of expected now. I don't know. Where were we going? 192, that 168, that zero, that 22, oh gosh, three? Totally guessing. Two, 236. Wait, was it 236 or 226? 236. All right. All right, so here's TrueNAS Core. I'm going to put this full screen really quick. Uh, this The Destroyer Greg. Hey, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. Uh, Craven. Need is a strong word. I'm definitely in the enthusiast camp, but as far as performance, it's very nice to have a 100 gigabit backbone for iSCSI traffic to be able to do heavy IO activity for all my services without bogging everything down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't... I run iSCSI here uh, and I I don't do anything over iSCSI other, other than like file shares. But I, if I could and had a SAN, I would because then I could put all of my VMs, um, their virtual, you know, my VMs could run on that SAN and then go over iSCSI uh, back to my Dell R710. And then so, it's crazy to think about, but basically doing, you know, block storage over the network, I think is how it works, how I understand it. So that I could, you know, use that as a remote drive, <laughs> remote air quotes. Uh, yeah, so that I could uh, have all my VMs running there instead of on physical disks that are attached to uh, my Dell R710. Iscuzzy with ISER over ROCE with ZFS is pretty spectacular for performance. That sounds awesome. Uh, SAN versus hyperconverge, though. Yeah. Okay, let's log into this guy and see TrueNAS Core. Like, dude, Tim, stop talking, man. Did I get it right? Yeah, I did. So, yeah. So if you haven't seen it, if, if you've seen TrueNAS, looks like TrueNAS. If you haven't seen TrueNAS, welcome. Um... Uh, this is TrueNAS Core. Oh, did I seriously do TrueNAS Core? Oh, you're kidding me. Kidding me. I meant to do TrueNAS Scale. I totally, totally messed that one up. But anyways, we'll we'll act like uh, you've never seen this and we'll act like I was going to do TrueNAS uh, Core. Should probably change that. Wouldn't take more than a few minutes to spin up. But if you haven't seen it, it, it you know, it looks very similar uh, to FreeNAS now. Oh, man. All right. This I did this on purpose, so you guys will come back on Thursday. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. I totally messed that one up. It's supposed to be scaled. Chose the wrong ISO. That's what I get for reading so much. I was wondering when I saw FreeBSD when I booted Thassian. Yeah, I know I totally, I totally messed that one up, didn't I? That was a bonehead move. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can totally spin up the other one. Uh, I have a SAN with 24, 24 2 terabyte drives, uh, 10 core CPU, and 256 gig of ECC DDR4 memory, uh, which serves out all the storage for all my virtualization. Wow, that's uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's quite the quite the infrastructure. 24 2 terabyte drives, man. That's a that's a lot of power too, and a lot of heat. Because uh, man. Uh, I know that my uh, two and three terabyte drives, you know, I mean, they draw okay power, but they get pretty warm, you know, especially if they're um, in an array and just kind of running all the time. They get pretty warm. That's for sure. And that's all running. T sign, that's it running at home or like at work. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I, I totally, totally messed that one up. Yo, how's it going? Lights out 21. How you doing? How's it going, bro? Good here, bro. How you doing? Doing awesome. So many drives. Plot twist. He lives in Alaska to, to cool his setup. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know my setup alone gets pretty warm. I think that uh, a lot of that has to do with my two video cards running all the time. But man, it gets it gets kind of toasty in my basement. I don't have AC down there, which is okay. Uh, and same goes for like heat, I guess. I guess it kind of gets some from the radiators. Uh, okay, you're qualified for a <laughs> data center. Totally. Yeah. Or uh, you know, data hoarders. Isn't that the one? That, uh, <laughs> data hoarders is the subreddit, I think. <laughs> uh, t Stein, oh yeah. Uh, I had to get a portable AC and throw it in the same room uh, not to have it boil my house. Yeah, that's crazy. 
you know what, let's do this real quick. This will take no more than 60 seconds because yeah, because I'm going to, because after that, you know, I, I guess I could, I guess I could show that uh, while this boots up, but I'm going to do this real quick. This won't take too long. Hardware, CD-ROM, physical. All right. Someone, someone double check me. We're going to pair on this guy. Uh, so we're, what are we grabbing? Don't grab that. You're going to scale. That's what we're grabbing. This will seriously take a whole three minutes to reinstall. It's it's pretty fast. Trunas scale, see, all right. So now it says it. Uh, at home, yes. Wow, T Stein, that is awesome that you have all that going on at home. Uh, lights out twenty one. Hope you have a great stream. Haven't had the best day. I apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry you haven't had the best day. Um, hope everything's okay. Let's go here. We're going to wipe this out. By the time I tell two stories, uh, this will be on true scale. Uh, the destroyer, Greg, hope you have solar. Uh, so electric bills aren't hurting your pockets. Yeah, I, when I need to get solar too, so I can sell something back to the grid. Powers uh, do use some, fortunately, some of my stuff. Uh, makes a little bit of money to help pay for the bill. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I uh, next house, totally getting solar. So, uh, t I wanted to set up some NVMe uh, as well uh, for my hypervisors from the SAN, but ran into a brick wall since ESXi doesn't seem to support a Linux NVMe target. Oh, that stinks. Oh, so I think that explains your sand piece too. Uh, so you're running ESXi, right? And that was always my like, do I build a sand or do I go, with, you know, find a diff different hypervisor? That was kind of where I was at. Yeah. All right. Now, now it all makes sense why you're running a sand because of ESXi. Because like, yeah, because yeah, because it's ESXi. Because you need either a, a RAID adapter, a sand, and I'm sure there are other storage options. Oh, that was awesome. It took quicker than I thought. Um, but yeah, I kind of I kind of ran into that too, and I was um way um out of my league trying to figure out what I should do at home and thinking like, oh, maybe I'll do ESXi and I'll um build a SAN. And I was like, I have no idea where to even begin with this. Um, but that's when I ended up going with you know Proxmox, CFS, and everything else I'm doing. Here we go. Like that was that was quick. Um that's awesome though. I wish that uh, I wish that ESXi someday would uh, make their make their uh, home version a little more friendly, but that's not that's not what they're here to do. They're here to make some money. Um, you live in Norway. Electricity is cheap. Oh, nice. Norway does look like a beautiful country. I totally agree. Uh, it actually kind of actually kind of want to try an OpenStack cluster to see if I can get away from VMware. Nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Proxmox is uh, pretty dece, pretty dece. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, I think, more than pretty dece. Um, I use Proxmox with iSCSI for free, for free high availability, nice. Would love to use EX, ESXi though. Yeah, I, I've gone back and forth, I, I um, yeah. Sometimes I wish I could have ESXi again, but like, I, I think I left EX, ESXi when they were doing their HTML client five or something um, and everyone was freaking out about how the web client was terrible and how they still wanted like the windows client that was written in c sharp and all this stuff that only ran on windows i was like this is like this is kind of backwards <laughs> like i get it like the web version will be tough at first and browsers you know aren't the best place to do some things but at the same time to only have you know, your management client only run on Windows and have to do some, you know, password hack to get it to work was not fun because I've been through that. vCenter HTML5 is pretty good, frankly. Good. That's good. Because I, re I remember when it, when they first launched it, like people, you know, it was in beta. I was downloading and installing the beta version every time they released one uh, on my ESXi. And, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, only that I was only hearing the, the squeaky wheels in the forums or on the internet. But 
people people didn't like it at first and i was like hey this means i don't need to install it on my windows machine i can just open up a browser and get there through vpn anywhere you know it's awesome but Um, yeah, ESXi had issues uh, with my HBA for some reason in the latest release, but Proxmox is my go-to. Awesome. Yeah, this is, um, so I just bought an HBA not too long ago. It was my first like time buying a, a real HBA. Like I, I have a couple of uh, rate adapters. Oh, we're already, we're already up and going, 237. Look at that, I'm like staring at the screen. Um, and so I bought a couple of HBA adapters an HBA adapter and it, it works with Proxmox because it's, you know, it's just Linux, I guess. So it's awesome. It is awesome. I have the external one though, where you have to plug in the, the special cables. Um, VMUG advantage. Oh, VMUG advantage is a $200 for one year. It includes several VMware products. Usually there's a 10% code for first time buyers. Thassian. Thank you for that. I've always been curious how much um, the VMware license costs. And in my head, it's like thousands because, you know, you know, how else are they going to make money? <laughs> so to know that it's, you know, uh, me as a home user could pay $200 for a year, still kind of expensive, but um, it's, it's nice to know um, because now I don't have to assume, wrongly assume that it's thousands of dollars. Um, targeted for non-commercial use. That's good to know. Cause that like, um, yeah, their, their, their current license for a home, it's, uh, what one socket. Um, I think one socket unlimited, unlimited cores, but then each virtual machine can only use up to eight cores. So, um, so yeah. And then, then there's, you know, Hey, you need a, a rate adapter or sand or something to, to, for your storage, which I was kind of like, Oh, but then once I, I bought my R710, I was like, maybe I can. But then I was like, wait a second, I have 24 logical cores. You know, I want to take advantage of a lot of these in, in some of my instances. But yeah, I was going to do more. Uh, I swear that the two LSI HBAs, yeah, me too. Uh, I've only ever used one and it works great. <laughs> uh, the SAN has nine... 9305-24L, my general storage has a 9305-16L. I think that might be I, I can't remember. I think it's I, because I is ex internal, right? Just guessing, yeah, it's a capital I. Uh, I'm calling it VMUG, so hopefully they call it VMUG. <laughs> yes, I, cool, yeah, yeah. Because I had to figure out the difference between E and an I when I bought mine. And uh, I almost bought the E, but I wanted the I. Um, uh, the VMUG advantage is not available for production use. Obviously, it's intended for self-education. Okay. Yeah. I mean, does home stuff count as uh, production use? Yeah, I think so. I, I think if commercial use, I think is probably a better better term. Uh, you know, if, if you're using it for anything commercial, which, you know, there are a couple things I run that make, you know, a dollar or two. So, <laughs> yearly. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so for me, I, I don't think that license work. Not like they're gonna, you know, they're, they're gonna track this guy down, but at the same time, I I uh, play play by the book. Um, Exactly, bit of a bummer. Yes, I, okay. Uh, commercial use, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sucks they charge for education, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I but I think the educational the the best educational version of ESXi is just the free version, right? Um, the free version where you're just limited by cores per virtual machine or sockets per uh, server. So yeah, so so I think I think it's fair of them to do. I mean, I mean I I know a lot of people get you know kind of up in arms when companies try to make money. <laughs> You know, but if if they weren't making money, they couldn't make products or pay their people. So I I, I understand that uh, that uh, not everything can be free all the time because otherwise it's not a business anymore. It's just a charity. Um, but yeah, and I digress. And uh, working on that cool story, bro. Emote. Uh, essentially, any use that is not an educational is productive. 
in the context of him. Okay. That is not educational. Okay. I see what you mean. So that could mean like, Hey, I'm running some open source free, or I'm, how about this? I'm running a non-for-profit business on top of whatever VMware. And they would say that's not commercial. I don't know. I'm not a licensing person, but anyway, um, with VMUG, you get a V center, V center server though. Yeah, that's true. So you can live migrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. And that looks awesome to me. That, that looks sweet. Like a uh, buddy of mine that I worked with, he was all into VMware. Everything started with a V. It's like VMware, except for ESXi, but he would talk about vMotion too. And I think is vMotion what you use to live migrate people over to a different cluster and stuff. And he was all, he would geek out every time I talked to him about it. Probably the same way I get, <laughs> yeah, vMotion. So he would, he would talk about it so much and talk, tell me about all these awesome features. I guess I, I do the same about certain things. He'd probably be like, yeah, Tim, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyways, here's uh here's TrueNAS scale. Like looks like FreeNAS. Uh, well, sorry, looks like TrueNAS. Um, there's already updates available. I'm not going to do that now because I thought last time that I would do it and I would get some magical thing, but there weren't any magical things that I got. I think a lot of fixes under the cover. So if we just kind of drill down through here, this is going to look exactly like TrueNAS does now. So uh, nothing surprising here. You know, in accounts, you know, we have users. In system, we have a lot of the same things. Taco, what? Oh, oh they're just, uh, this is kind of their, they're helping me out uh, kind of way. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to look exactly the same. Where I started to get interested was like this whole clustering option. I was like, ooh, clustering, what does this do? Coming soon, click to learn more, which links out to their documentation. So that's cool that that's coming with clustering. Um, and then I was like, ooh, containers, tell me more. Oh, that's also coming soon too. Here's the developer notes, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, VM support using KVM as the backend has arrived. Hey, oh, that was, yeah, so that was the 15th. So all of this stuff is coming. That was actually last month too. Virtual machines too. So this is already using uh, KVM right here. So that's pretty awesome too, that they've already built this out um, looks like the same UI to support KVM over, I don't know, what was the free BSD virtualization, Beehive or something like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, for me, the biggest thing that I was wondered about was like, hey, since this is now, uh, since this is, uh, what is it, Debian, you know, I should be able to run, you know, like app get, right? Um, and install whatever I want. What? Right? Oh, sorry. My microphone's like right in my face. Install update. Oh my gosh. Like, can this guy even type? An apt get works. So I was like, okay, that's awesome. So then I can do like apt get install QEMU agent, right? Because everyone's like, I want the tools uh, guest agent. Sorry, I'm like. And you actually can, which is awesome. So what that tells me is like, hey, that's awesome because now you can actually get all of the optimizations. And I'll just reboot this guy uh, for KVM for Proxmox. So we get a guest agent now, so we can get things like, um, yeah, we can get our actual IP address when this starts up, um, and we can do all of the things you can normally do with uh, QEMU, which is pretty awesome, uh, I think. Um, and then this is just like, I have, uh, I guess I'm very easily, uh, amused. Um, and there's probably, if I would ever said this to like any of their engineers, they would probably be like, we did all this stuff to get on the Linux. And the only thing you care about is a QEMU agent. And I would, you know, there's probably lots of stuff and engineering feats that happen to, to, for them to, to, to build a, a parallel system, um, that has the same exact you know, interface and API, uh, but then more on top of a totally different stack, like totally awesome. But for me, 
You know, and what people ask me and for all my videos, how do I install the QEMU agent? Well, we just did. So TrueNAS scale coming in 2021. <laughs> so, but I mean, this, this is going to continue to evolve. And I will tell you um, what I heard, at least on the podcast and the um, YouTube video, which I think was kind of a podcast engineer talk, uh, but on YouTube. And it might have been, uh, uh, I forget what channel it was, uh, storage, storage systems. Uh, anyways, not important. What I heard though too is that uh, their VP of engineering said that you'll be able to upgrade too, which isn't really an upgrade. So they were saying like, yeah, if you're on TrueNAS, you can upgrade to TrueNAS Core. And I was like, that's not really an upgrade. That's like a migration. That's totally switching out, <laughs> you know, operating systems. That's like saying like, hey, I'm gonna upgrade from Mac OS to like Windows 10. Not really, but you know what I mean? I was like, well, that's that's pretty interesting stuff. So. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, I will do it uh, for the simple fact that like, again, I don't, I rarely drop down into terminal to do administration stuff. Yes, I do do it for disk stuff and stuff like that, but for OS administration or installing, you know, third-party tools, I never do it on current, uh, current free NAS. Um, but knowing it's there and that I can in the future is, is, is interesting to me. Uh, especially when, you know, it's going to be Debian and then we have aptitude. So that's pretty cool. Um, but if you haven't seen the rest of, of TrueNAS, uh, can I let this guy run in the background? Never done it. We're doing it. He's probably going to freak out though. Um, but if you haven't seen the rest of, um, FreeNAS or TrueNAS or you never looked at it, you know, it's, it's basically, um, a NAS on steroids, uh, where, you know, um, you have your authentication system, you can create users, uh, you can uh, create ZFS pools uh, with disks. I should have had some disks here, but um, if I had more disks, I can create pools and then from pools, I can create, I think, VDEVs. Um, and then from there, I can create shares um, that I can share. Um, I can share out those pools um, in different ways. So I could create, you know, a Samba share, uh, NFS share, uh, do block share, so block level share if I wanted to do iSCSI, which we were kind of talking about earlier, which is super cool and interesting too. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good NAS. Where I think it gets um, kind of interesting now is that they're going to be adding containers, so LXC containers, and uh, they said Docker too, which Debian supports Docker, so I, you know, that's easy for them to, not easy, but I, it's conceivable that maybe they would have some kind of Docker management here too it made it seem like they were going to support both. So I didn't think it was going to be like Proxmox where it's like, hey, LXC containers, first class citizens on our platform, Docker, figure it out yourself. What I got from their podcast was, well, their channel, the video, was that they said it, they said, he specifically said it's going to support native Docker. And so I, my thought in there was that you would have some kind of container management system, uh, maybe similar to Portainer, maybe. Uh, which is interesting. Um, so that's cool. And then, of course, virtual machines. I don't use, uh, you know, TrueNAS or FreeNAS for my hypervisor, uh, but it's here if you need it. And so this version that comes with TrueNAS Scale uh, will be supporting... Oh, what is it supporting? Um, not Beehive anymore. KVM on the back end, which is it's pretty awesome. And I think they need to leverage that for a lot of things they want to do uh, with how they want to scale out. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I think looking at, you know, looking at this is like, yeah, it's awesome. looks like FreeNAS, kind of feels like FreeNAS. Um, but knowing all of the stuff that's under the covers and the stuff that's coming soon makes this really interesting too. So this is kind of like, you know, we'll see. Wait and see. Uh, that's what it is now. They say most of it's coming in in you know, 2021, that's the only thing that they've, uh, uh, they've committed to was I think a year. Um, but I mean, if you see how quickly they're doing stuff now, I, you could probably bet on that. It'll probably, probably be early 2021, which I hope, which, yeah, I mean, as long as it's available, I'll probably switch to it because I have no, no true, true alliance. I have no, you know, alliance to what the OS that, uh, TrueNAS runs on my alliances to, to true, TrueNAS itself. And so 
Yeah, so I don't know. When, when it gets released, I'll check it out. I might even go early, because, like, why not? Like, why wouldn't I throw, like, I don't know, 9 terabytes of data on something that's beta? I mean... <laughs> But yeah, I, I probably shouldn't, um, but I may, just so I can kind of get ahead of the curve and speak intelligently about it um, when people ask, rather than not know uh, if people ask. Anyways, uh, so I'm a little bit behind. Uh, it's a godsend uh, since I can't just migrate my VMs over to another host platform and maintenance upgrades and need to shut down the VMs. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. And you can do the same thing with, um, you can do the same thing with, um, with Proxmox, um, if you set up a cluster, totally, uh, which is which is awesome. I'm Ting's team single host man with 96 gigs of RAM. Sometimes it's a struggle. I hear you, man. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I don't have high availability. I do not at all either for you know for my home stuff. I don't. Um, it's just uh, it's a little too expensive for me. Um, you know to have two of everything. Um, and I know I could probably do two of most stuff virtually, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I don't have two physical servers. So if I shut one down, the other one, I could, you know, migrate everything over to there gracefully, which would be awesome. I'd lo I'd love to have two servers to be able to do that and just say, shut down, you know, and as things are shutting down, have my, you know, my other Proxmox, um, host or node, just like, you know spinning up those virtual machines or bringing them online or rerouting or however it works would be awesome it would totally be awesome but maybe someday when i um uh, when i build my next server i don't know what my next server will be though but yeah um you can but it won't break stuff i think at least at this point yeah <laughs> yeah i i totally agree yeah I, I yeah i think i'm gonna hold off on on uh migrating just yet but i just wanted to kind of spin it up and kind of show it off and talk about some of the things they were talking about. But, you know, if if um, if you're running the next version, TrueNAS now looks very similar, you'll just be missing some of these additional features. But yeah, it just depends on what you want to what you want to get out of your NAS. Uh, it seems like TrueNAS wants you to get more out of your NAS, you know, and just like Proxmox wants you to get more out of your hypervisor. I mean, I feel like everyone's building like small business servers all over again, <laughs> you know, where it's like, hey, have this one thing that can do all of these things, uh, or a Swiss army knife. You're waiting for Zen 3 epics before I buy my next server? I think so too. I, I at least want to take a look, uh, you know, price them out and see what it would be. And then, you know, just look at some of the performance, you know, the value to performance ratio for me. It's going to be play a big deal too, because I don't need a ton of performance. I, I, I'd love to have tons of little low power cores. I don't need a ton of high powered ones, at least for my workloads, you know. Awesome. Well, um, man, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call it for the night. Um, man, I really appreciate everyone coming, hanging out, chatting. We had a lot of good discussions in there. I mean, we went from everywhere to Proxmox to FreeNAS to networking to sand to ice guzzy to to anything uh racks uh love hearing about all the stuff that you guys are working on and i really appreciate you coming out tonight um there were also uh subs in there bacon hawk hey thanks i don't know if you're still around but man thank you so much for the three months really appreciate it and gear bear uh thanks for the 100 bits really appreciate it and everyone that followed thank you so much everyone who just stopped in for the first time hey there's another follow hi uh, Curry Coon, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, everyone else who stopped in that just got here from YouTube, thank you. Um, I know that's a huge chasm to cross, um, you know, going from YouTube to Twitch. Uh, so I appreciate you guys landing in my channel and happening to land in my channel when I'm online. So I appreciate it. Finish the diagram, post to Discord. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to seeing that diagram, Takano. Appreciate it, man. Um, everyone, have a good night. Yeah, headphones, man. I should I should totally have like outro music. I don't even know what it would be. It would it would probably be this, but no, it would probably be this would probably be my intro. Intro music. Oh no, I don't know. But this song is so awesome. This is for the headphones, Craven. Thank you. But everybody have a good night. I'll be back on Thursday. Take care. Thank you so much. Hey.